Ladies and gentlemen, I am not a revolutionary, but I would like to share my story with you today. I was born in 1982 in Johannesburg, Soweto, during the time when the apartheid government was at the helm of our society. A system so brutal, in fact, that if they found out a child had been born from a mixed-race couple, they would remove that child from both parents and put that child in a separate area of only mixed-race people. Now, I, fortunately for me, was sheltered from these experiences. Now, I remember one day my parents told me that we're going to visit your grandfather in jail. And so, as an eight-year-old, I had a typical image of what jail was like. Concrete bars, dogs, fences, guards everywhere. But when we got there, it was nothing like what I had imagined. And so, I didn't understand that they had removed Nelson Mandela from the famous Robben Island and put him in isolation in this house called Victor Vester because they were trying to break down his mental to say, Nelson Mandela, you're an old man now. How about you spend the rest of your days with your children? And we will make sure that you live a comfortable life in a house such as this. But of course, Nelson Mandela never caved in, as we all know, because his freedom was very much linked to the freedom of those millions of South Africans. And so we left, and two weeks later, our grandfather came out of jail, and the whole world was in jubilation. Mothers, fathers, aunties, even the cats and dogs were celebrating in the streets. But that was only the beginning of the work that had to be done. People outside the continent of Africa have very little knowledge on Africa. And the little information that they have is what is perpetuated on the media, that Africa is a place of war, poverty, disease, and dictators. And the only positive thing is going on a safari seeing the animals, not the people, but the wild animals. And I realized that we had to do something to change this mixed conception that people have on our continent. And so at the time, I was working at a bank, and I called all eight black people that were working at the bank at the time, and I told them about this feeling that I had and you know what? They had the very same feeling. That we need to change the image of Africa. That we need to empower our young people to be at the forefront of Africa's development. So that when they meet travelers and they travel themselves, they can speak about Africa with a heightened sense of pride and confidence. To say that I am an African, I know what it means to be an African, and I am proud of it. In 2018, we celebrated 100 years of our grandfather's life and legacy. And so I thought to myself, how do we make sure that this legacy does not be forgotten? Wouldn't this world be a better place if we had 100 Mandelas? Or we had more Mandelas? Freedom is never really won. You have to earn it and win it in every generation. Now, our grandparents fought the good fight, a physical battle of slavery, of apartheid, of segregation. And they were able to break those chains, those physical chains. And now it is our turn to be in that seat, to see what are the isms and schisms that still exist today. Ladies and gentlemen, we cannot allow criminals to continue parading as leaders of our society. When are we going to say enough is enough? When are we going to take a stand? And so now, I want us to salute these great men that have come before us, who have paved the way and who have shown us that it is up to us to determine our own future and create the environment in which we want our children to thrive in. 
Now, I'm going to teach you a salute. Are you ready? When I say viva, Nelson Mandela viva, you say viva. Are you with me? And when I say long live the spirit of Martin Luther King, long live, you say long live. Are you with me? Viva Nelson Mandela, viva! Viva! Viva Roger Williams, viva! Viva! Long live the spirit of Martin Luther King, long live! Long live live the spirit of Coretta Scott King, long live! Long live! I thank you.